Hello everyone, and welcome to this quick DevTools tutorial video. We found it really useful to capture our playtest sessions alongside pad input data, and since we've used this setup, we find it much easier to understand what's going on when players try our game. By the end of this video, you'll have put together a recording configuration just like this one, ready to use on any machine straight away. So let's get started. We'll be using Open Broadcaster software for this task. While it's more commonly associated with streaming, it's also great for making local recordings. We're using OBS over something like Shadowplay, as it gives us many more options for creating and configuring overlays, such as the gamepad overlay we're going to add later. Download the latest version from obsproject.com and install it. When it comes to basic recording setup, that's kind of beyond the scope of this short tutorial, but you're probably just fine to use the wizard and select Optimize just for recording. Before we get into any further OBS configuration, we need to install another tool called Snaz? Snazzy? I don't know. This will give us a quick and easy way to display time and date as an overlay within OBS. Go ahead and download it. I've included the link in the description. We'll start by adding a new source to OBS. Click the plus icon down here and select display capture. If you have multiple monitors, make sure you select the one the game will be running on. Next, we'll add our gamepad overlay. Hit the plus icon again and add a browser source. For the URL, just paste in the address I'll put in the description below. Head over to gamepadviewer.com if you want to customize the pad display or have any issues getting it to work. Now it's time to configure our text sources to display the time and date within OBS. Before we can import them into OBS, we need to open SNAS and confirm a few settings. Make sure the time and date format are set up how you like them. In the time section, select copy path to clipboard and head over to OBS. Add a text GDI plus source. Ensure read from file is ticked and paste in the path you just copied from SNAS. Repeat the same process for the date. Copy from SNAS, add a new source and paste in the path. Now we have all the elements we need. We just need to move and resize them correctly. Luckily, OBS makes this super easy. You can just click and drag to move things around. Assuming your recording settings are in order, you can hit record and capture the playtest session. While the basic setup is great, here's some other things you might want to add. Adding a webcam is usually pretty simple and can help you decide if a player is getting frustrated with your game. Assuming your webcam is already set up to use on the machine, just add a video capture device source and position it somewhere sensible. Something really cool you can add if you've got a Toby Eye Tracker is an eye tracking overlay. This will let you see where players are looking as they play the game. Just keep in mind that while it will show you where they are looking, it doesn't necessarily show that they're attending it. I suggest only using this for very specific testing, as it can be very misleading. Setup is pretty simple. Install the Toby Go software, configure it to your liking, and then add it as a game capture source in OBS. Do this by putting it into the capture specific window mode and selecting the ssoverlay.exe as the target window. Once you've got your footage, we suggest just uploading it to YouTube as an unlisted entry, unless it's super sensitive. Then you can go through the video and easily add timestamps to the description wherever something interesting happens. You can also use the various speed options to take a closer look. Obviously having the raw files is better, but if you're a remote studio like ours, we find this is much faster and easier to share. Have you got your own playtesting setup? Let us know how it works in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.